Hello everyone, I am your Duke Merrill, and this is Skyshine's Bedlam. Uh, uh, it, it, it's an indie game, I'm not exactly sure. Versus Evil. Skyshine. Look at this guy underneath me. Oh, you can scroll the screen. I didn't realize you could do that. Look at these guys underneath me. They're all just like, we're cowboys. Futuristic weapons. So, the basis of Skyshine's Bedlam is pretty much that uh, th there's some sort of dystopian future or something. Pretty much the world has been ravaged by... something? I'm assuming nuclear fallout. And... So everybody pretty much has found different ways to live. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the campaign explains it uh, once you start it up. Uh, it, this is a very difficult game because there's a bit of micromanaging just for your giant death vehicle. You know, like food, energy cells, and fuel. And then there is combat outside of that, where you come into an encounter and you have your group and you say, go, fight. And this game used to be even more difficult because if you play a game such as XCOM or something, you will know that the that every unit gets two actions. It used to be and there is a function that you can use to reactivate this. It used to be two actions per team. So one team would move, you know, say, say, move, shoot, and that was the end of the turn. Or move this unit, move this unit, end of turn. And it made it insanely difficult. Now they have it so that it's two moves for every unit, and it's still difficult as, as heck. I've only been able to complete the campaign once because it because there's a bit of a thing that you can abuse where you just close the game out and it makes it so that you're good to go. So these are the human dozers. Uh, I have unlocked one more for the marauders. And if you see this elite right here, that pretty much means that if you choose this, you get to start off with that elite. If you choose this, then you start off with that elite and that elite. Elites are pretty much big units that can take a lot of abuse, but... You're going to want them, but the smaller units can be a lot more effective during certain situations if you know how to use them. Or if you have a lot of energy cells, you just use these. These are... Uh, the, these are equalizers, weapons that you use if you have energy cells. Look at it right here. So, these will cost you, actually, these don't even cost you energy cells, I don't think. And pretty much the, everything does something else, and the elites really aren't they that special, they just look cool, but most of them are all pretty much the same thing. So I've beaten the game with this guy by abusing a, uh, <laughs> exit game, if, uh, if I ever lose someone I don't want to lose. So I'm going to start off with her, and I'm going to go with the one elite, one veteran, seven rookies, just to allow myself uh, one elite. And frankly, I find it easier. Congratulations, mechanic. You have begun restoring order in Bedlam. But by defeating the Marauder incarnation of King Viscera, but your task is far from over. Rest not, mechanic. You must travel again to Aztec City and safely deliver more citizens to Byzantine. But be warned, there are rumors that some of the factions are weakened in German forces. Okay, so it, it doesn't go through the intro screen anymore because I've beaten it once. So this is Bedlam. Pretty much it's... It, it, it's pretty much the hellscape of the entire area. And I am choosing where I'm going to start off at. 
If I choose here, then I can go grab these energy cells, fight this guy, potentially get a nice elite unit right there. And down here, probably grab this oil, grab the, these cells, and grab this guy. You want to choose the most complicated path imaginable. Colossal Dozer, do pretty much we're let out. There. It just... I, I, I just shortened the entire two paragraphs. Thank you. Ah, crap. I forgot that you can use energy cells to upgrade your stuff, making it so that you use less meat or less crude air oil or people heal faster or resource efficiency. So, let's go ahead and make it so that we use less oil. Okay, there we go. As the dozer travels along the road, you enter an area of trenches and bunkers that seem to be remnants from the ancient conglomerate conflicts. Nearby are several cyborgs exploring a fortification bearing the faded logo of Valentino Tactical Outfitters. The dozer comes to a halt and the crew disembarks to investigate. Oi, these beer fleshers are thinking they can scrounge the site before us. We already stake claims to any gear, so you're just gonna have to get smithereened instead. <laughs> Let's see. So, I like keeping snipers because you can attack people from further away. Let's see. Trenchers are good because they have knockback abilities, however, I am going to trade out my gunslinger for a frontliner, pretty much you can use them as cover. They're meat shields. You, you, you use them and you allow them to get killed. That's what they're used for. It's marvelous. Ah, gives me flashbacks to the war. <laughs> when giant mech cyborg people were attacking. Yeah, okay. So. Let's see. So, it, it always starts off insanely easy with just a few units that you have to deal with at a time. Yeah. So, for right now, we should only have to deal with two people at a time. But, as the game progresses, it gets insanely difficult and you end up having to deal with eight or nine guys at once. All oh, right. So since I'm playing as humans, every few turns we have some sort of ability that makes it so we can move faster, or you know, one more, one more turn. So I'm just gonna shoot that barrel. Explosions. So, so pretty much, the, if there's one thing that I do like about this game, is that it has an interesting so, sort of, uh, that's our spoils. With the cyborgs defeated, the crew approaches the bunker. It is sealed by a corroded metal door, but the crew's fusion torches make quick work of the rusted hinges, and they are able to enter the structure. Searching inside the bunker, they find an intact storage chest in the dusty debris and skeletons. It contains stealth suit, designed to create a high-tech camouflage field that makes the wearer virtually undetectable. The dozer technicians are able to research the invisibility device, turning it into a battle equalizer that can give advantage. Stealth suit outfitter. Nice. So, these little exclamation points are just points of interest. You send a uh, little vehicle out there, something happens, and then they come back. It's these points that matter because these points move your dozer along. So, it's really good to go ahead and hit these points up. I need to turn that down even more. Jeez. While traveling through an area of scrap and rubble, the crew's attention is drawn by the nearby crackle of fusion power. Moving through the debris 
filled zone, they discover a barricaded area. Inside are several cyborgs modifying equipment to charge and store power cells. You want these sparkers? You're gonna have to take them the hard way. And that's our favorite way to do things. How do you get hurt? Oh, right, you're a cyborg. Alright. So, cyborgs lose one health every turn, but they increase their damage by one every turn. Or every other turn, I'm not exactly sure. So, they, they become more and more powerful over time, but they slowly kill themselves in doing so. So, one thing that I like about this game is the... It is how well first and foremost the art style I really do enjoy it uh, they're inside my range Wait. and this is why you have a shotgunner that's not my shotgun there he is they have a nice pushback effect that makes it so you can easily hit them So we'll move right there. And he's still alive. Dang it. However, this is a good point to uh, go ahead and get him a kill. Even though he's a meat shield, when, they, when you get three kills, your recruits become veterans. And it makes them a lot more dangerous. Oh god, Jesus. H. Wow. I'll never be able to turn this thing down enough. It's always going to be loud. <laughs> so we got a few spoils. Uh, at this point, I would say go ahead and increase the barracks. Because it allows my people to heal faster. Which means that my elite, who is down to 1 HP, will be able to heal more. While exploring a rocky ravine, the crew discovers the ruins of a gigantic war galleon, likely used in some ancient skirmish when mighty r rivers ran through the terrain. The vessel is barely intact, and its decaying shell now only serves as a home for skittering vermin. The crew cautiously enters the wreck through a gap in the corroded hull, and makes their way to the ship's turbine compartment. Most of the equipment is useless, but they uncover a rack of fusion batteries that still contain power. The crew returns to the dozer with the valuable stash. Got power cells. That's good. I don't worry about this until last, because you need energy cells in order to use most weapons and equalizers. So typically... It you you want to go ahead and make sure that the stuff that you use just traveling is used first. So, let's go ahead and increase. I'll increase the heal. Oh, uh, yeah. Heal rate. After climbing a rocky ridge, the crew discovers a makeshift shack assembled from various scrap nestled in the crevices of a cliff wall. Let's enter the shack! Hey guys, should we enter a shack or leave? Is there anything else out here? Okay. <laughs> Approaching cautiously, the crew enters the shack. Inside, they discover that the rickety structure is unoccupied. Only a makeshift bed and battered chair remain. Whoever once called this dilapidated wasteland shelter their home has long since abandoned it. Nothing of value is found. So pretty much we gain nothing from that. We 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 lost. We lost right there. But it's fine. As the dozer travels along the road, it enters an area of scrap piled so high on each side that it rises higher than the vehicle itself. Suddenly, a tower of metallic debris begins to topple, landing directly on top of the dozer with a res resounding crash. As the crew deploys to assess the group, what? <laughs> As the crew deploys to assess the damage, a group of fierce cyborgs- It's always the freaking cyborgs! 
rush into the road and begin attacking. We gonna dismantle this fabbing rig and add it to the scrap pile once we pull out all the good pieces. But first you beer fleshers are getting evicted quick like. See, she's already healed. Thanks to our increased healing bay. So, I, I, I assume you kind of get the gist of it. Bedlam has a whole bunch of different people. Right now, we're only seeing the cyborgs, which are pretty much a whole bunch of, like, angry scavenger folk. That like to fight. Which, you know, to each their own. There's the humans, and the area that that uh, we start our expedition from is, is pretty much, I think it was called New Byzantine or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, to, to be completely honest. But, pretty much the whole gist of it was that it, it's becoming overcrowded and we need a new place to live. So we go to this place that is essentially in Mexico called Aztec City, and it's supposed to be freaking wonderful however our expedition is awful because everything is trying to kill us Yay. yeah the AI in this game isn't the best but they make up for it in numbers Let's go out. As the crew is exploring a region of dusty flatlands, they come across a vast expanse and what looks like a crumbling temple at the far end. The field leading up to the temple is filled with large clusters of corroded metal covered with soot, the remnants of ancient vehicles. Upon arrival at the structure, the crew realizes it is actually not a temple, but the ash-covered remains of what was once a war mall from a time when consumer-based hostilities were commonplace. The majority of the massive building has collapsed from ages of severe bedlam climate. Let's try to find a way inside. The, if there's one thing I dislike about this game, it's that it's like two options. Tip it, if you have certain crew members, then you may get extra options. Like this crew member can, you know, get inside or whatever. So and you get extra rewards because of it, but. Normally, there's just two options, and it's kind of it makes it a little dull because you, you just go for it in this game. You 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 don't go. Oh well, one of my people is hurt. I I don't think I should go in. No, you just do it. The crew finds a crevice in a damaged wall large enough to fit through, this and slips into the shambles of the building. Most of the interior is demolished and inaccessible, but one store with the name Corwin personnel security appears mostly intact and could be explored the crew steps in through the shattered storefront window and begins seeking valuable items the store has largely been stripped of anything useful but while searching behind the counter they find a hidden switch that reveals a secret compartment on the real wall real wall the real wall inside the compartment is a stock of unused consumer grade blizz Blitzer screens made by Corwin Systems, guaranteed to deflect your strife and save your life, according to the label. Nice. Well, we've gotten two equalizers in the span of, like, ten minutes. So that is awesome. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, hey, travelers. We must beg your assistance. Our colleagues were collecting important data on the roof of this structure when they were accosted by the rather combative clan of cybernetically enhanced natives. It's almost as if the cyborgs have taken over this area. I have no idea why. Our colleagues are using valuable fusion technology to conduct research. It must not fall into the hands of undesirables. And they are quite undesirable. Damn dirty plankers. I'm not racist. You're racist. Our personal security detail proved ineffective. Could you extinguish the threat? 
The crew climbs the roof of the nearby building and finds a group of cyborgs preparing an assault on the scientists. You beer fleshers want to get in the way of our fair acquisition? Guess we'll indulge ourselves in some extra carnage. Oh no. Extra carnage. And by extra carnage, I mean I plan to rape your body. Whoa. Dude. With my big metallic gun. And by gun, I mean penis. Oh. You could have just said that in the first place. I, I thought it was... Well, I thought it was fairly... F fairly, uh... You, I, I, I figured you would understand, but I, I want to make sure that you understood. Th does that make sense? No, I, I, I got it the first time. You, you can, you're, you're, I, I, I really don't like talking with you right now. You're way too weird. Set up right there. Question is, who do I go after? I can get to that guy. Yeah. Yikes. Okay, doesn't look like I'll be able to kill... Nope. Won't be able to kill him. That is a darn shame. But I might as well at least try and hurt him. Hey! Stop it! You're... Stop it! You're killing him! Ma'am! Ma'am, kill him! Kill him with your giant nuclear rocket launcher! Thank you, Mom. Ah, you're the best mother ever. Who do I use next? You can shoot him. Noise! Ah. Yeah, th this is a game I actually do. In this threats to you travelers, our demise seemed assured until your intervention. Allow us to compensate your effort. It appears our equipment was damaged by these quarrelsome individuals, but we have ample supply of power cells to share as a sign of appreciation. I'll invite them to the dozer, because it's the only option. A tempting offer, but our allegiance lies in the mysteries of this region. We must stay behind, but we do appreciate the rescue. Best journey to you. A few minutes later, help me, a giant alien scorpion is attacking me. Oh, it's eating my limbs. Yeah, I, I, I apologize to, to the, you guys because this is not the most exciting game. It's just kind of a game that you, you play in, in a very relaxed state and uh, I... I I, I just really needed something to record. I, I think I'll still continue playing this to see exactly how things go. I honestly do like this game. I do like it. It gets a lot of mixed reviews on Steam. In fact, a lot of people hate this game because it was utter sh shite. And now it's actually not too bad, but people have not gone back and played it. But I personally enjoy it i think that it has a lot of promise it will it, or not a lot of promise it, it it's just it's just kind of a fun game to just sit back and relax with and it has a lot of love interesting parts about it but i digress let me go ahead and upgrade then i'll end the episode right here and while i am doing this allow me to think of what to say at the end of this episode Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Don't get slain by the Babadook. Eh, that'll do. Bye.